Hey, what's up guys? My name is Arena and welcome to my channel where I review everything tech. I finally got my hands on the OnePlus 7 Pro, the latest and greatest flagship from the OnePlus. As you know, this phone is just a collection of crazy specs and numbers, but before I do a full review, I was particularly curious to test out its cameras and to see for myself just how the OnePlus 7 Pro cameras compare against the cameras on the last year's iPhone XS Max and the brand new Pixel 3a XL. So in this video, we'll take a look at some daylight photos, night shots, portraits, selfies and photos taken in challenging light conditions and much much more. And of course, I'll test the side-by-side -side video quality and stabilization. First, let's take a look at the specs of these three cameras. We have quite an impressive setup on the OnePlus 7 Pro. We get 48 megapixels on the main camera and 8 megapixels on the telephoto camera. And following the popular trend, we also get an ultra-wide angle camera here, measured at 16 megapixels, but since the Tennis Max and the Pixel 3 XL don't have ultra-wide angle cameras, we'll save it for the future tests. When it comes to the Tennis Max, we have a dual 12 megapixel rear camera, and speaking of the Pixel, we get 12.2 dual pixel rear camera. Camera. But as you know, the overall performance of any camera is rarely just about the number of pixels. Producing good quality photos is a complex process that includes many factors. So let's also look at the apertures of these three devices. When it comes to OnePlus 7 Pro, we have an aperture of 1.6 on the main camera and 2.4 on the telephoto lens. On the iPhone XS Max, we get an aperture of 1.8 on the main camera and 2.4 on the telephoto lens. And when it comes to the Pixel 3 XL, we get an aperture of 1.8. Let's start this test with a portrait mode comparison. And you can see right away how different these three shots look. I think the Tennis Max gives us the most in terms of vibrance, the Pixel 3 XL gives us the most in terms of details, and the 7 Pro gives us a pretty bright photo with this interesting fade-like filter effect. When it comes to separation from the background, I would say all three cameras do a pretty good job here. In this particular example, my backpack is a little blurred on the shot from the OnePlus 7 Pro, but through this camera test you will see that from time to time all of these devices have minor flaws in their portraits. Out of the three phones, I would say that the Tennis Max has proven to be the most consistent when it comes to taking portraits, but of course no phone is perfect. Let's look at the next example. And here, once again, we get the most vibrant photo from the Tennis Max. The 7 Pro has a slightly faded effect on its portrait, and we get a very detailed shot from the Pixel. You could clearly see the texture of my hair and my clothes. But if you ask me, in this particular example, I think I like the shot from the 7 Pro better than the others, because in my opinion, this photo looks like it's ready to be posted on Instagram. And that's exactly what I've done. I've simply posted it as is, no filters needed, since it looks like it was already edited. And when it comes to separation from the background, this time it was the pixel that blurred out my backpack and a little bit of my cardigan. In the next three pictures, once again, we have a recurrent pattern in terms of brightness, colors and details. And in this particular shot, the pixel has blurred out my leg, my hand and we also can see some flaws over here. Next, let's look at some random daylight shots when there is plenty of light. It seems like an easy task to most phones these days. I noticed that sometimes the pictures from the 7 Pro come out slightly darker when compared to the Tennis Max and the Pixel 3 XL, even though the 7 Pro has the largest aperture on its main lens. Also, it's important to know that if I zoom into the photos, you could see that the shot from the 7 Pro is not as crisp as the others, which is actually pretty weird considering its number of pixels. On the other hand, if you're not gonna do this pixel peeping with your photos, I don't think it should be a problem. In the next example, once again, the shot from the 7 Pro looks slightly darker, but it still has a beautiful detailed sky and we can see all the details in the distance. And let's look at the daylight photos, taken in more challenging light conditions, with the sun shining right into the cameras. These pictures look slightly different, but at the same time, all of these cameras produced well-exposed, detailed shots, and I wouldn't say there is dramatic difference between them. The next example shows us that all of these cameras work pretty much on par, with some slight differences in shadows. 
And here I would say that the 7 Pro produced a pretty outstanding shot, it's well exposed and very detailed. Now let's look at some colorful pictures, so you can see the difference in color temperatures. The Tennis Max produces a very warm picture, the pixel makes its photo look pretty cold, and I would say that the 7 Pro's photo is something in between in terms of color temperature. And once again, if we look closer at these three photos, you can see that the shot from the OnePlus 7 Pro is less crisp. In the next macro shots, I try to take these photos as close as possible, and this is what I got. Moving on to the selfies, and first, let's look at some specs of the front-facing cameras of these phones. We get 16 megapixels on the pop-up selfie camera of the OnePlus, 7 megapixels on the iPhone, and 8 megapixels on the Pixel. The face retouching mode was off in all of these devices, so you can see how the skin looks by default in a selfie mode. The Pixel 3 XL gives us a very sharp picture, you could clearly see the texture of my hair, also the building, the sand and the ocean in the background look very crisp. The selfie from the 7 Pro makes my hair look a little lighter than it is in real life, making my hair look a little ginger, and the shot from the Tennis Max looks pretty natural. However, the skin tones are really nice in all of these selfies, not too pale and not too orange. Now let's also look at some portrait selfies, and the separation from the background looks pretty good in all of these shots. Next, let's look how these cameras perform when the sun goes down and it gets darker. The Tennis Max produces a very bright photo, highlighting all the shadows. The 7 Pro and the Pixel do a pretty good job when it comes to exposure as well, but making the shadows look more pronounced. You can see that the sky looks more dramatic on the photo from the Tennis Max, however, the building looks very faded when compared to the shots from the OnePlus 7 Pro and the Pixel 3 XL. In the next example, surprisingly, the Tennis Max blew out the sky here, the Pixel is pretty close to doing the same, while the OnePlus manages to produce a well-exposed and very detailed shot. A few more examples for you guys, taken in the low-light conditions. Moving on to the photos taken in the dusk, I was curious to see how the Pixel and the OnePlus 7 Pro compared to the Tennis Max while using their default mode, and as you can see, when it comes to the OnePlus 7 Pro, the result is not the best, the photo looks very soft and faded. Then I used the Nightscape mode on the 7 Pro and the Nightset mode on the Pixel, and I compared it once again to the default mode of the Tennis Max, since it doesn't have a dedicated night mode option, and I must say that the difference for the shot from the OnePlus 7 Pro was dramatic. Moving on to the night shots, and once again, first I used the default mode on all three devices, and these are the results I got using the night mode on the OnePlus 7 Pro and the Pixel. Now let's switch gears and look at some videos. The video from the OnePlus 7 Pro is very vibrant, while the iPhone XS Max and the Pixel 3 XL produce pretty natural looking videos. And when it comes to stabilization, I've always thought that the XS Max is pretty good at it, but as you can see, the stabilization on the OnePlus 7 Pro and the Pixel 3 XL is so much better, and it's actually hard to say which one is the best at it. What do you think, guys? Once again, we can see that the OnePlus 7 Pro provides the most vibrant video and it looks nice, however, if you take a video of people, it could backfire at times, like in this particular video, where my face looks very red.
So, having done this test, I honestly have a bit of mixed feelings about the cameras of the OnePlus 7 Pro. I must admit that after seeing all of these impressive specs on paper, perhaps my expectations were a bit too high. Don't get me wrong, the 7 Pro's cameras are more than capable of producing good photos. Oftentimes, the shots from the 7 Pro look just as good as the ones from the mighty iPhone XS Max and the Pixel 3 XL. Also, I really enjoyed the portrait mode on the OnePlus 7 Pro and the video stabilization is simply amazing. But the occasional softness in the shots and the occasional dark-looking photos, despite having the largest aperture in this test, have left me feeling a bit puzzled. Hopefully, some of these things will be addressed and fixed in the upcoming software updates. I'm really curious to know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you in the next one.